about 628 this morning, we got alerted at our station for a box alarm structure fire at this location. Um, it was a very long response because this is the very west part of our district and the closest station right now is in Jonestown. So it was about a 20 minute response for us, which is unacceptable. Um, the first battalion chief got on scene at about 643, uh, reported heavy smoke and fire showing from the front and the rear of the structure. Uh, while he was in and out, he got some call notes on his NBC that there was possibly somebody still inside. Um, so he, he arrived and gave pre-arrival instructions for our first in, uh, fire truck, which was Quint 101. They initiated um, suppression activity, uh, and it was confirmed during suppression that there was still a, a victim inside the structure that had perished. It's a 78-year-old uh, female. So was she alone at the No, there were two other people in the residence that were able to get out safely. Two males got out safely. Family? Uh, that I don't know. So what is the current status of that? Because it looks like maybe it's going to be quite soon and then it will be here not too long ago. Right. The Travis County Fire Marshal's Office and the Travis County Sheriff's Office are investigating the cause of the fire because it is a fatality and they bring out their crime scene unit and, and do all the forensic investigation that they need to do. Uh, there's still a few hot spots in the structure, so we have firefighters on hose lines that are you know, there to assist and support the investigation. So um, how long do you think it will take to have hot spots in the uh, I think we'll probably be out here for at least two or three more hours. And um, based on your expertise, would you say it's suspicious, not suspicious? I can't. Without, without the findings of the investigation, I really don't know. So, so we noticed you were frustrated earlier that it took a while for any of the uh, fire departments to respond. Are you thinking of making any changes, maybe? Well, some changes need to happen. We need a fire station farther to the west. We're currently building two fire stations, one in Lago Vista, uh, downtown Lago Vista, and then one out at the high school. Uh, to help cover Point Venture and, and the area around uh, Lago Vista, but still, coming this far to the west, the response time is it's unacceptable. Um, 20 minutes to get a fire truck on a working fire, is, that's, it just can't happen. Um, yeah, uh, anything that we get out here toward the, toward the county line, the response times are, are excessive. Your fire station is located in in Jonestown, right? There is one in Jonestown. Um, there's one out in uh, Sandy Creek, uh, around Mountain Road. Then we have one down off of Boggy Ford in, in Lago Vista. Um, like I said, we're building one at the high school to kind of help cover that area. We're building one in downtown Lago Vista to help cover the, the bulk of that uh, city area there. But when we start coming out west, no, it's still uh, an excessive response. So, um, my last question is, is how far was it shut down in Fort Knoxville? Um, they shut it down as soon as our first units arrived at about 645, 648, and they just opened this lane here about uh, about 30 minutes ago. So it was probably uh, shut down two and a half hours. Nine, yeah. yeah. It was basically from that checkpoint to that checkpoint. Yeah, because we had fire units taking up the entire entire roadway. So we were able to, to let some units go back and get in service and, and help cover the district, and then we were able to move everything over to one side so they could open it up. So anything else Uh, no, we'll just be out here to support the investigation, and uh, once they're done, and once we're confident that the fire's extinguished, then we'll, we'll clear. But I say it, it'll probably be a couple more hours. Were, okay. were the family that was here, were they the ones that called 911? Um, I believe they were, but there was also somewhere there was a neighbor involved that actually saw the fire and came over and tried to, to help. Um, people get out, so I'm not sure who actually placed the call. Do we, do we know what was uh, the person to die, the fire, uh, no. no. 
from the, the they, they haven't touched that area because they're waiting for forensics to go in there, so at this point we don't, we don't know. There's, there's still some hot spots around the roof line, around the eaves and stuff. Sometimes we'll get a little flare up, so we'll try to control those the best we can without infer interfering with, with what the investigators are doing. Any known origin or uh, uh, No, when the first, when the battalion chief got here, there was a lot of fire, and it was really hard to tell where it actually started at this point. Once they are able to go in and look and, and look at burn patterns and things, they'll probably be able to tell where it originated. Um, that I don't know. The sheriff's department's controlling that, and I'm not sure what their uh, what their strategy is. Okay. All right. Have you spoken with any of the family at all? I haven't. The, the battalion chief, who's also the incident commander, uh, spoke with them, but I have not. Okay.